all social networks and technology firms are adapting to the coronavirus health crisis. My name is Dan Patterson, and Facebook has recently released a brand new tool called Community Help. This is designed to help communities, neighborhoods interact with each other. It allows neighbors to ask for assistance and other neighbors to provide that assistance. It also allows uh, neighborhoods to provide places to donate money and other resources. Fiji Simu is the head of Facebook app and her group oversaw development of this product. Uh, Fiji, thank you very much for your time today. I wonder if we could start with community help itself. Let's dive in. Tell me about what this product is and how it works. Thanks for having me, Dan. So community help is a tool that we have launched a week ago to help people uh, have a place where they can ask for help or offer their help. And uh, thanks to this more structured tool, we are increasing the chances that people who need help are going to find people who are offering that type of help. So far, we have seen nurses asking for medical equipment. We have seen people offering to deliver groceries to the elderly. Uh, we have seen people asking to volunteer at local organizations. And we have even seen the New York Blood Center ask for blood donations. I know that it allows for these features to exist, but walk me through uh, the mechanics of how asking for assistance or help works in a in area of uh, say 50 miles yeah so you can simply go to the facebook coronavirus information center inside your facebook app or go straight to www.facebook.com slash covid support and that's where community help is when you get there there's going to be a prompt for you to request help or offer help and uh, we're going to ask you which location you want to offer help in so that for example if you're only a able to offer help within your local neighborhood, let's say just a five mile radius, uh, you can specify that. Is it possible that uh, although the best intentions of the tool are to help communities out, we do need to still practice social distancing. Is it possible that uh, the tool could inadvertently spread coronavirus? So we've been very thoughtful about that. And if you were to go right now into community help and uh, post an offer for help or asking for help, the first thing you would see is a very big informational module uh, with guidelines from the CDC or the WHO uh, that explains how you can stay safe. So we've, we've really wanted to make sure that people really understand that even when they're asking for help, they still need to practice social distancing. Another big problem that has affected all social networks, not just Facebook, but uh, almost every social network, is this propagation of misinformation and disinformation. How are you tackling this within communities? So that's an excellent question and something that we've been incredibly focused on since the very beginning of, of this crisis. And so on misinformation, it's actually quite simple. If we see a claim that has been debunked by a credible health expert, mostly the CDC and the WHO, we simply take it down. And um, the, the idea there is that anything that leads to imminent harm, like, you know, false cures or things that, like claims saying that social distancing doesn't work, uh, are just going to be taken down. Within communities, which are really exploding right now, we see a lot of people joining local communities or communities of help around coronavirus, we've also gone one step further by letting our members have access to trusted information. So not just removing misinformation, but also showing them relevant information. So if you go to one of these groups right now, uh, you are going to see a pop-up with a lot of information about how to stay safe from health authorities. And today we're actually launching two additional features where we're partnering with the leaders of this community to suggest to them content that they can share with our members. These are live broadcasts from the CDC, the WHO, or local health organizations, or a learning module that we have developed in partnership with the CDC that they can now share with the members of their community. I wonder if you could walk us through what working with these third parties is like. This is, of course, about more than just Facebook. Facebook is the hub, 
but you work with the CDC and the WHO and third party fact checkers. So take me through the process of conversations with those organizations to how that those best practices show up in uh, the community help feature on uh, the Facebook app. So we have uh, we are we are in constant communication with these organizations because, as you can imagine, things are evolving incredibly fast. So uh, we've been fortunate that uh, these organizations have seen the power of a platform like ours to disseminate reliable and authoritative information. So we have uh, people in these organizations which are working very closely with us to develop these uh, these modules, for example. So on the learning module, it was really taking a lot of their advice and making sure that we could like really organize it kind of as a curriculum uh, and put it in the hands of community leaders so that they could walk their members through all of that really rich information. Oftentimes, uh, community members need help or need assistance, but not, might not know how to verbalize uh, the need for help. And often, some of this help is mental or psychological. We all need a place to vent. Are you doing anything within the app to help not just physical services, but also mental health services? So we've actually seen within Community Help quite a lot of therapists offering their services for free to people who have mental health issues during this time, which has been really heartwarming. We are thinking more about how we can support people with their mental health during this time, and we'll have more to announce in the coming weeks. But in the meantime, what I can say is that the number one problem that people have right now with social isolation is loneliness. And so our tools, the basic products that allows you to feel part of a community community with Facebook groups that allows you to place a video call to a friend is actually really critical right now to helping people feel less alone and feel connected. And, you know, all of us are kind of figuring out how long this might last and, and how this might affect our communities and ourselves specifically. Uh, but take me into the future a little bit. Uh, we don't know how long this will last, but show me the evolution of community help in, say, uh, six weeks, six months, and a year down the line. So we think this is going to be a long lasting crisis, even though it's going to take different shapes. So right now, obviously, we are seeing a lot of us for help with very practical things related to social distancing, like the elderly requesting uh, grocery deliveries or nurses requesting uh, medical equipment. But as we head into a reopening of society, we are fully expecting that a lot of the help that's going to be needed is going to have have to be around economic opportunities uh, and the economic impact of this crisis. So that's why we are uh, orienting community help towards that and have allowed uh, the presence of local fundraisers inside community help. And we are continuously doing more to help small businesses during this crisis. An example of that was last week we announced that people could purchase gift cards from their favorite small businesses uh, to support them during this time of need. What are some of the problems you've encountered in uh, working with uh, communities and neighborhoods? Look, these are all granular and uh, they often have problems or at least the developing and rolling out an app in many of these communities might have problems that were unforeseen when you started. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you've experienced? Um, so on, on communities, you know, a lot of how communities manifest on Facebook is through Facebook groups. And uh, the thing that's incredibly important in a, in a local community, uh, in a Facebook group, is actually the community leader, which we call the group admin. And we see that these people have enormous influence over making sure that their community is healthy, that the dialogues that are happening in that community uh, are healthy. And so we rely a lot on them to make sure that um, these communities are uh, really dynamic, vibrant, and we give them a lot of tools to make sure that they can do that. Uh, and to that end, uh, how did you work to localize uh, the app for all of the different cultures and communities, not just in the United States, but around the world? 
So uh, if you're talking about this particular crisis, we are working with health organizations really across the world to make sure that uh, the content that we have reflects the local guidance that these health organizations are, are wanting to give people. Uh, so uh, it's, it's been, you know, partnerships that we've, uh, we've developed over years of working together with this organization and are now uh, really critical at this moment in time. Okay, so um, tell me how th this is kind of broad, but tell me how community help interacts with the other components of Facebook, not just Facebook as an entity, but with WhatsApp and Instagram, uh, and then also the broader technology community as a whole. This is about an ecosystem, not just one application. So Community Help is a product that's currently only available on the Facebook app. However, uh, this idea that we want to uh, connect you to reliable information uh, from trusted health authorities and help people connect is something that spans across all of our applications. So on Instagram, for example, we have uh, done messages at the top of Instagram to connect people to health resources. And on WhatsApp, we have created a bot to connect connect people uh, to answers about health. So uh, these, these are all like different approaches that we're taking to a common goal, which is really connecting people to reliable information. Last question, Fiji. It's been nice learning things from you, but uh, I wonder if you could leave us with your personal reflection, your personal take. Um, why do you care about this? I, I understand it's your job, but coronavirus impacts us in very personal ways. So uh, tell me how you are personally connected uh, to this product and to this project and uh, to how coronavirus is changing life. Well, you know, I think it's really affecting all of us and it's affecting us both at a global level and at a local level. You know, I see uh, a lot of people in my local community uh, being elderly and being stuck at home and I want to do everything I can to help them. At the same time, my entire family is in France and they've been on lockdown for a couple of weeks. And to me, creating products that allow me to connect with my family so that I know that they're okay uh, and make sure that the local community I grew up in is also finding resources to be resilient during this time uh, has been really uh, critical. Like an example is that I have uh, there's a Facebook group uh, for my hometown in the south of France and every day they are doing live videos of uh, people locally teaching each other skills to pass the time while on quarantine. And these are the types of things that really warm my heart because I know that this is really meaningful for the local community.